Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. Today I'm going to be wet forming leather knife sheaths. Over the past 30 some odd years I have made a lot of leather knife sheaths. I first started making uh, leather knife sheaths uh, when I was reenacting and uh, I've made several for other people, made several for myself, not to mention tons and tons and tons of other leather goods. And it's something I never did professionally. I did it because I enjoyed it and it was inexpensive compared to having leather products made for you. And, you know, not trying to blow my own whistle or toot my own horn, but um, I think I did a pretty decent job over the years. Now, as you know, I gotten into the whole bushcrafting thing. You know, I started discovering just how nice Kydex sheaths are. I mean, they're custom formed, they're rigid, and they lock the blades in, no matter what kind they are. And that's really awesome. So I was using. Kydex uh, sheaths for almost all of my knives for oh gosh I'd say close to 10 maybe even 15 years now and um, I just have, have grown accustomed to these well not too long ago I purchased this awesome awesome knife it's the SE6 HM I absolutely love this knife it's a fantastic knife it reminds me a lot of my knives that I used when I was reenacting however the sheath uh, she's a puppy crap she's a no good she's a garbage see it was um, so so disappointing uh, to, to, to have this really great knife and a really crappy sheath um, and um, I just <laughs> I was not pleased we started looking into having kydex sheaths made and uh, it's one thing I've never done myself and they are very expensive and um, I was saying well you know I could make a better knife sheath for this knife but uh, I'm just I, I'll set aside I have other knives so it was on the back burner well I purchased this knife from Madison pool and again this reminds me a lot of the SE6HM which reminds me a lot of the reenacting knives that I, I had in the past and it had this really nice sheath and I mean it's it's a well-made sheath and um, it looks cool too because it's got these pointy things on it I like it a lot Madison told me that you know this sheath could fit this knife even better if I were to wet form the leather and uh, I was thinking well yeah that fits pretty dang dang good but I have a knife sheath. And she's a not so good, okay? She's a not so good. She's poopy crap. Poopy crap. And I was thinking, well, yeah, I could use that wet forming um, process on this knife sheath and actually make it worth something as opposed to something I'll never use ever. No, well, Madison had the answer. She had all the information I needed to wet form sheaths. So today I'm going to wet form both of these sheaths so that I can have a good sheath that's going to be better and a puppy crap sheath, uh, she's going to be a more good too. Uh, see? And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it as I do it. This will be the first time I ever tried anything like this. So if everything goes horribly wrong, you'll be there to see it. And you can make fun of me. One way or the other, it doesn't matter whether it's success or failure, I'll be publishing this video. 
You can either learn from my successes or learn from my mistakes. Hopefully, it's from the successes. These are the items that I'm going to be using to wet form my sheaths. I'm going to need to have a container that my knives will fit in, or my knife sheath will fit in. And I've got water to uh, put enough water in here to soak my sheaths. I'm also going to need some towels to dry them off, off partially and to also act as a buffer between my um, clamps and the sheaths. Now, I was thinking that with the clamps that I have, there's going to be spots that are going to be missed in, you know, forming the sheath. So I thought it might be a good idea to use some shims to be able to clamp down and place around the sheath when the knife is in it to really get that to form much better. It's just an idea. We're gonna see if it works. So I'll need clamps, I've got shims, and you're also, this, this is the technique that Madison showed me from uh, Bomb Proof Bush, Bushcraft. She knows her stuff, so I'm gonna trust her on this. She uses a uh, beeswax type of a mixture to completely coat the blade and the handle uh, before it goes in the sheath. Well, it just so happens that I have a concoction that I made about 30 years ago when I first got into reenacting. Um, I, I really wanted to do things historically correct. So a lot of the things that we would have been conditioning our leather with would have been a uh, beeswax and bear grease uh, mixture. Well, didn't have any bears laying around, so I talked to uh, Gary Barker, a guy I trusted very, very well from Frontier Resources, and he said that what he uses as a, an equivalent of um, bear grease and beeswax is one part beeswax to three parts olive oil. He said the olive oil has a very, very similar consistency and shelf life to bear grease. So that's, that's what I used. And with the one pound of um, block of beeswax that I had, I was able to make four of these containers of this mixture. And you can see how well it's lasted throughout the years. <clears throat> and it's still just as viable today as it was all those years ago. And the last thing you're gonna need is some type of like a sm snow proofing and uh, a snow seal, so to speak. They actually make a, a product called Snow, she she um, snow Shield. And um, what it does is that this product will condition and protect the leather. It makes it waterproof, but it still conditions the leather so the leather doesn't dry rot. And right now, this leather is getting pretty hard. This leather is nice and firm because it's fairly new. So once I'm finished doing all of the wet forming of these knives and they're completely dry, then I'm going to be applying the snow shield. So those are what you, or I think it's snow shield, if not snow proofing, whatever. Um, but it's a waterproofing for leather. These are the things I'm going to be using to wet forming my sheaths today. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is to get those sheaths soaking. I got my basin and I'm going to pour about at least an inch inch and a half of water in there, just enough to be able to have the uh, sheaths completely submerged. And now we're going to take this wonderful sheath, put it in the water. This uh, poopy crap uh, sheath, uh, she's an also good in the water. And press that down and I'm going to let those soak in here for about an hour. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to treat 
my blades and my handles to make them as waterproof as I can make, make them. Now I know a lot of people, they'll wrap everything in cellophane, uh, they'll put cardboard around it, hold the cellophane in place, then they'll do electrical tape all around it to hold everything in that. And um, Madison believes that that's uh, excessively time consuming and unnecessary. And uh, so I'm following her lead with this. And uh, so Madison, if you're watching, if things go awry, I'm blaming you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this and I'm gonna be very generous with the application of this. And remember kids, you gotta be careful when you're working with knives. They can be very, very sharp and very, very cutty. And when I'm uh, working this over the blade, I want it to be good and thick. And when I get up by the handle, I really want to get in all of the creases. I don't want any water getting in to saturate my handle and uh, possibly crack that. So there's a good thick coat on the blade. I want to get some of that off of there and move it all the way up the handle. I might do the handle last. I'll do the other side of the blade and get that completely coated. As I said, this stuff is 30 years old. I would, if it's not 30, it's 25. And uh, it's still just as viable as it was the day I made it. And having... <laughs> Um, basically a gallon of this stuff it is uh, definitely come in handy over the years well, the back edge of the blade it's going to be a little problematic but that's okay I think I have a good coating on that now and if by any chance there is any little area that uh, the water gets through the blade, uh, these are both very high carbon steel and they are going to be able to be uh, refurbished, brought back to life, all that rust removed. And uh, if nothing else, add a little character to it. I really want to get all of this covered up. And I think this is sufficiently covered. Now I'm going to do the same thing to my SE6HM. One of the things that Madison said, which um, I, I, I believe completely as well, is that this blade will be used in some way, shape or form at one point or another to touch something I'm going to be eating. So as opposed to using a grease, petroleum-based grease, like Cosmoline or something like that to protect the blade, um, having this food grade um, material to coat the blade is going to be something I don't have to be concerned about as far as using this blade in the future to process any food. I would definitely want to make, make sure I pointed that out because um, I, I believe that uh, philosophy and uh, I'm practicing that philosophy and uh, just wanted to point that out as one consideration uh, you might want to make if by any chance you were considering using something like a cosmoline or any other type of a petroleum based grease uh, in this process as opposed to using the uh, cellophane and electric tape method and I'm putting this on here real thick and before I put it in the sheath to uh, form it I'm going to remove a lot of this uh, goopy stuff because that's going to be on the inside of the sheath as well and uh, we don't want it to be overly conditioned we want to be able to have that to where it's going to be able to firm up and be a good hard shell around the blade and it will allow the drying process to do what it needs to do while the uh, knife is wet forming 
in the sheath. So get this done and then I'm going to uh, wipe off any of the excess and um, then as soon as the uh, sheaths have soaked for their hour we'll go ahead and move on with the next step. The time is up and the sheaths have soaked an hour and they are quite floppy. First thing I'm going to do is remove as much excess water as I possibly can before I get the process started. I'll do that for both. And these are like sponges at this point. They have a lot of moisture in those. I'm going to continue to work these for about another five to ten minutes. Get as much of that excess moisture as I can out of there. And we'll go on to the next step. I want to go ahead and start with the one that needs the most attention. And that will be the sheath for my SE6HM. I'm going to slide that in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage this and really press and really try to shape that sheath as much as I can. And I'm going to force this for a good little while. I'm going to, I'm going to probably force this for about five minutes at least. And I'm going to, my hands are going to be really, really sore. I have massaged this leather as hard as I possibly could for as long as I possibly could and it's, it's made a decent shape for the handle to lock in which should prevent it from sliding out like it did before. Now the next step I need to put it in a towel, a dry towel and cover it completely so that way it will absorb some of the water and will also prevent any of the clamps or the shims I'm going to be using uh, to create grooves in the leather. Now, Madison didn't say anything at all about using shims. That was my idea. So if I screw this up, this is on me. But I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the handle and the top of the handle and make certain that I have that right where I want it going all the way up and then I'm going to apply the clamps and we're going to have a, a, a few of them. I'm going to put one right here in the center. There we go. That one's good and tight. I'm going to put one right over here. Hold that in. And another down toward the bottom to get that in there good and tight. And the last one I'm going to do is right here on the spine. Now everything, theoretically, should be good and tight and ready for me to dry. My next step for this is to take it out, put it in the sun, and let it dry. I'm going to go ahead and prep the other one and do the same. Well, folks. These have uh, set overnight. I checked them. I want to start getting dark. They were still a little damp, so I took them inside. And they've been roughly in this condition for about 24 hours. Let's open them up, see what they look like. Now, I guess this is what they call the moment of truth. 
do to remove my clamps. And I hope that the shim idea worked out okay. Keep everything nice and flat. That feels cool. Yeah. There is the SE6HM. That sheath looks very well formed. The clamps really did a number on the back though. I'm glad I put the shims in front. Um, didn't want that on there, but that was uh yeah, that's that's not pretty. Nope. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. A little teeny tiny bit of surface rust on the blade there. But the knife's in good shape. Gonna take a little bit of uh some scrubbing with some hot soap and water to get this cleaned up. And the sheath itself is very, very rigid. And uh, don't want to get any of that oil from the handle on those. But yeah, yeah, the, the backside being extremely ugly is not, uh, <laughs> not great. Should have did the shims on the front and the back. But the front, Looks pretty good. Got a little bit of a texture from the, the shim, which is crazy. Well, I guess it would be the texture from the, the towel. Let's go ahead and uh, check the other one, see how it did. Yeah. Well, again, we got that texture from the texture of the towel impressed in here, which I'm not happy about, but at least it's not the back. <laughs> yeah, this one's going to be another one. It's a really. It was the grease that I put on there that created suction was holding it in. But that blade survived beautifully. Yeah, I don't see any surface rust on there at all. Well, a tiny little bit there. That's no problem. I will clean up pretty quick and easy. But the sheath looks pretty good. Again, the, uh, this texture I'm not thrilled with, but, you know, it is what it is. I'll have to make certain that I have some type of a very, very smooth rag on there in the future. But with both of these, the fit is a whole lot better. And super, super tight fit. And this was the one I was really, really wanting to improve. And that's really, that's in there. So, they're not pretty, but they work. So I'm very pleased. Well, I got the, the knives cleaned up pretty well. And with the exception of just the tiniest little bit of uh, surface rust right here, I'm going to take off here in just a few minutes once I get this next step done. Uh, the blades were perfectly fine. Um, so no rusting. So the, um, the grease job I did on them with the um, olive oil and beeswax mixture worked out really well. Last step I need on these, uh, they're very, very rigid and uh, they hold their form really, really well. Last step I'm going to be doing is to put the snow proof on them. And um, this is basically a same process that I used to do to treat all of my leather uh, goods and that's basically you are going to hand rub all of this material into this get a good smooth even coating and I just use little circular motions and I always try to put the glob and you know, it's not much of a glob but it's a glob nonetheless I always try to work on the stitching first because the stitching has all those little teeny tiny holes in there from where the awl went through in order to sew the, the pieces together. And I want to fill those completely because I want to make this waterproof. I don't want to have any moisture coming in anywhere. 
and the um, stitches on the surface anywhere. And that's also going to be including all of the edging right through here. All of that's going to get a good heavy coat and any places where there's a little crack or something like that, a little, little tiny opening, I'm going to put one big glob on there. Now the reason I want to do all of the globs and the openings first, that's where it's going to need the most amount of the weatherproofing and then the rest of the surface, whatever is left from doing all the stitching and the edges will be more than enough for me to be able to cover up the entire rest of the surface all the way around rough side and smooth side. I'm going to get that done and as soon as I'm finished I'll let's see what it looks like. Now that the uh, snow seal has cured on the sheaths, they're good and dry now, no more of the oily surface. Let's see how they fit. Now this is the one that I really needed to do the most and that was my SE6HM and uh, SE's leather sheath and that is a remarkable improvement to what it was. Fits nice and snug. Fits just like a sheath should. Now this is my sheath from Shankle Homestead Leatherworks and we're going to see how well that works. This was an excellent sheath to begin with. And again, this one, it's better than it was as far as the retention. It's not as pretty as it was anymore because of the texture that's now permanently part of the uh, leather due to the texture of the towels I was using. So this was a first time experience for me. And um, with the exception of the texture on the leather, I think it was an absolute success. And I'm definitely going to be using the SE6HM uh, a lot more now that I have a sheath that's not going to be clonking around every time I take a step and will actually retain my blade. Um, so I'll definitely be using that and I'm definitely going to be using this a lot. Uh, I just I love this knife and now with the, the sheath improved a little bit at least in far as its function goes um, it's going to keep the blade in there much better than it would have before again. Uh, this was an excellent sheath to begin with. Well folks, I hope that uh, this information um, was something that you possibly might want to use or could use and uh, a little project you might want to try yourself. Uh, there are a lot of other videos um, online uh, for you to check out um, about this process and probably from people that have done it many, many, many times. So you probably want to take a look at them to make certain that you're not going to make any of the mistakes that I did. I was just basically going by the instructions that um, Madison Poole gave me, and um, I think for the most part, it was a success. Well, folks, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.